This video is brought to you by Knowledge at the Australian School of Business. For more information, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au. They say you never get a second chance to make a first impression. But equally for many people, they're continually making third and fourth and fifth impressions in the business world. They're continually meeting people and often falling flat on their faces. It's all down to etiquette, how they act either when they're at an office function, actually in the office uh, themselves, or alternatively out at a function in the evening. They may be incapable of networking or alternatively they're just rude to people in the office, even sending those emails, you know, hammered out in capitals that just don't get their message across at all. Business etiquette is absolutely vital if we're going to get ahead in the commercial world, which is why, for many people, they take on an etiquette coach. One of those etiquette coaches is Danielle de Macy, who is also studying at AGSM, which is part of the Australian School of Business. Danielle, now we keep on saying that business etiquette is vital, but, but why? What happens if we don't have the right business etiquette? It's a really good question. And I, I will say, first of all, when the word etiquette said, sometimes people's eyes glaze over and they think, it's not the 1950s anymore, we don't need this, it's not relevant, but it definitely is relevant. The reason why it is so important is what I think, especially in the business world, is it allows your behaviours to be neutral. So lots of clients might have pet peeves, they might have certain behaviours that they expect you to, to have standardised. Um, I guess I say it's on the side of a highway, lots of things that you could explode on, crash your car into. Etiquette, business etiquette keeps you nice and stable, neutral in the middle of that highway so you don't hit anyone's pet peeves or expectations of you. So it's your behaviours are neutral, not your personality. OK, but we have to divide this up, don't we, between meeting somebody for the first time, a business function, and just being in the office and acting generally. Many people often fall flat because they may be on their best behaviour at an interview, they, they may know exactly how they should act, but after a few months, you know, you get lazy and, and <laughs> colleagues are irritating you, you've got too much to do, and suddenly you, you just don't know how to act. Uh, there's, there's a perfect example, I think. If you were to have the best etiquette that you could... Uh, expectations that you could have. That would be when you meet in the Queen. Now, on the Queen's website, on her frequently asked questions sections, it says, how do I greet the Queen? And you would think that this is where all the protocols were. And all it says is that we don't necessarily have a certain standard that we want you to adhere to, but we just want common courtesy. Now, that's the Queen. So I think that if the Queen's expecting that sort of behaviours, then that's just something that you can run through your entire professional life. It is just common courtesy. Courtesy. There's certain rules and behaviours that you should adhere to because uh, it's just respectful of those people around you. You're just showing respect. And that can go from uh, a great pet peeve of some people in the office is leaving a phone un unattended uh, and it rings and rings and rings and you're not there. Now, I have warned you now, so if you do this and it goes out the window, you have been warned. So other things would be eating really smelly foods at the office. There's no certain rules out there. There's no etiquette book to say, do not do this. It's just common courtesy. It's just being respectful of those around you. Meetings are a minefield for many people. They have no idea how to actually act in them, and etiquette often falls down there. When people are in a meeting, they're either bored and falling asleep, the minutes have been going on for hours, or alternatively, they're suddenly thrust into the limelight. What should we do when we're in a meeting? Well, understand, I think it all comes down to purpose. Why are you there? Maybe you have to be there. So it really engage. If you are falling asleep, then you need to <laughs> ask yourself, is this a job for you, maybe? But again, understand how your behaviours are being perceived. Again, like I say, it's all about being neutral, not hitting any bunkers on the side of those highways. You have no idea what business opportunity is around the corner from you. And having certain behaviours that look negative in a meeting might make you hit one of those bunkers, especially in formal meetings or what people think is an informal meeting when they say, let's just catch up for coffee. A very common pet peeve happens in these informal meetings, and that's the tingle tingle noise that people make when they stir coffee and milk into, in, into their cup. Now, this is a very high percentage of people that it is their personal pet peeve and they get very aggressive about it. One lady that I surveyed said that if someone did this in a meeting, she would throw their coffee at them and walk out. So you can lose clients, you can lose business associates and break relationships in any meeting. You need to understand that any meeting, if it's informal or formal, is always a way to connect, grow, sell and really benefit you. You need to understand what the purpose is. 
and email as well. That seems to be where people just totally forget about the rules. Hammered out in capitals, other ones that are written in text speak. Mm. What should we be remembering when we're writing those emails to our colleagues? It's just that the environment has changed of how we write business letters. It's still a letter. You wouldn't type out a nice letter on perfect parchment paper, put it in a nice envelope, stamp it, and just before you do, slam all smiley faces on it. No. So don't do it in an email either because I've done quite a bit of research and over 40% of people hate, hate smiley faces in an email. We should have a pretty good grasp of the English language by now that we can express that we're being lighthearted without that smiley face. Now, of course, maybe while your relationship goes down the line, you are comfortable, you might want to open that up. And, and that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing about building business relationships. And you just don't, like I said, want to hit any of those bunkers on the side of the highway. And many people as well seem to hit those bunkers when they meet somebody for the first time. We're talking about going out for a uh, meeting a colleague, a business meeting, a conference, something like that. You go up and you see people are like, oh, hi, hello, we are right. People yeah. are not particularly aware of what they're there for. When you meet somebody for the first time, what are the rules? Okay, so you've got seven seconds to make a first impression. So it really isn't long. The first thing generally that you do when you meet someone is a handshake. One of the biggest, most important things that you can do to connect with someone is give a really effective handshake, especially with women in business and for men giving women handshakes. A firm, strong, straight eye contact are very, very important. You don't need to look down at your hand. They will meet naturally. What I'll say is that if you think that you're someone that may not have the best or most appropriate handshake is practice. Get your partner, friends, business colleagues and say, you know what, I think that this is a downfall when I first meet people. It's an impression that they think that I might have a weak handshake. Can I practice on you and get some feedback? Again, in this research that I've done, it was over 40% of people would think less of someone professionally if they gave a weak handshake. A dead fish handshake is a very common pet peeve. Out of those people, another 25% said that they would think less of the person personally. That's not a very good first impression that you need to be making. So that's all in the first seven seconds. You need to understand why you're there, for instance, at a networking event. Ask yourself, why am I at this networking event? Am I there to get free food? Am I there to get free, free drinks? Fine, if you are, then you can stand in the corner with your food and your drinks. But are you there to connect with people? If you are, then you need to make sure that you're able to connect with people. So have a drink in, in your left hand so your right hand is always free to handshake. If a canapé goes past you and, but you're connecting with someone, then you need to make a decision on what your priority is right now. I would say eat before you go to any function so you're not chasing those trays around all night. And does this also mean that you're not sort of juggling the wine glass in one yes. hand, the plate in the yeah. other, and that's just such a minefield, isn't it? You well, haven't what, got the third hand to What do you do? Yeah, <laughs> Where do you shake yeah, hands? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's really important to have that right hand clear all the time. But there are many people who just hug the walls, and I've seen quite very senior people who are just hidden away in a corner mm. talking to a couple of the people who they probably talk to on the board every day anyway <laughs> and not working the floor. How, if you are a nervous person, you're not really used to social situations, how can you work the floor mm. and get to talk to people? It's a really good question and actually extremely common. Shyness is something that you need to overcome and that might be shyness at a networking event, shyness if you need to run a meeting or present or go into an interview. And all I say about anything around shyness is the people that you're connecting with want you to do well. So if you go into an interview or running a meeting, running a presentation, connecting with someone and you're nervous, that's only going to make the entire environment awkward. No one wants that. No one wants you to do bad, be awkward, be nervous because they won't be able to connect with you either. So everyone that you connect with wants you to do well. So sort of getting over your own mindset in that situation to say that there is no danger here and just push through it. Kind of like fake it till you make it. <laughs> But if, supposing you are faking it, you want to go up to somebody, you're, you're on your own you're, and you know that you've got to work the floor and everybody's standing around in groups of two or three. How do you find people to go up to and then interrupt their conversation because that's what you'll be doing and then start talking to them? You just got to get in there. There's no way through it. If you don't know anyone, you're just going to have to pop in on the side. Slyly use your body to come in on the side so you're not an aggressive come in, I'm interrupting this whole environment, and just slip right in there and say, sorry to interrupt, please continue. Or, my name's Danielle. 
if it's someone also that you're in a conversation with and someone might be dominating the conversation with someone you want to connect with, you can just gently say, I can see that you're very engaged. I'd love to connect with you and have a drink a bit later. Please come and find me and exit the conversation. But of course, that's a social situation and it's social mixed with work. How do you actually cross over those boundaries between, say, you may be in the office, getting very familiar after a few years with most of the people you, you work around, are there certain etiquette rules about things that you really shouldn't be talking about in the office? Absolutely. And, and that's a good one. And especially uh, hugging is a very, very common etiquette mistake that people make. You might have the relationship with someone where it would be appropriate to hug them, but there might be other people in the meetings with them that might feel uncomfortable, alienated or left out by you doing that. Some people might just not like it, but you'll know very quickly where the boundaries are. That's why it's always good to have your behaviours neutral stay in the middle of that highway. Just neutral and courteous, show respect. You can't do wrong. And gender differences, male and female? Common courtesy doesn't have a gender. <laughs> All right, okay then, how about cultural differences? Yes, uh, it's very, very important that you have an awareness with who you're dealing with. If you're dealing with Asian communities, Russian communities, uh, American communities, then you need to understand what's appropriate in each of those. There's some cultures that find eye contact rude where in our culture it would be rude not to make eye contact. So uh, handshakes in some cultures, unacceptable, especially between genders. So it's just having an awareness and not pushing yourself to say, well, this is my beliefs, that's just how we do business in Australia, because why are you there? You want to connect with this person, so you need to be respectful and have an awareness of what's appropriate in appropriate times. That's all it comes down to. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, um, what office you're in, what country you're in. It all comes down to just having an awareness of what's appropriate. So finally then, Danielle, the top do's and don'ts for getting on in the business world. Wonderful. I'd say number one, maybe because it's just my pet peeve, is giving effective handshakes always whenever you meet with people. Be very, very aware of how you communicate, especially in that first seven seconds because you want to make an impressive first uh, impression. The, the next one would definitely be at networking events. Understand why you're there, what the purpose is, who you want to connect with and really connect with them. Thirdly, a don't is no more smiley faces, uh, no more acronyms. So unless you're writing to your 15-year-old nephew, that might be okay, but we all uh, should use proper full words. <laughs> No more acronyms, no more smiley faces. Um, and again, really consider your behaviours and how they're being perceived. Try and stay neutral. Danielle de Macy, thank you very much. It's been great to talk to you. Thank you. For more business news and analysis from Knowledge at the Australian School of Business, please visit knowledge.asb.unsw.edu.au.